on this RTE Sport Classic, it's the opening game of the qualifiers for Euro 2000. Croatia came to Lansdowne Road, having just finished third in the France World Cup of 98. With summer gone, autumn arrived, and Mick McCarthy's team was ready for a new campaign. Commentary from Jim Beglin and George Hamilton. Well, there's the 1-11, uh, to 11, and this is how they line up with Dennis Irwin operating at right back. Steve Staunton making his 75th appearance at left back, and Kenny Cunningham and Phil Babb partnered the heart of the defence. Roy Keane captaining from the midfield, Robbie Keane and Keith O'Neill, the two in front. Nick McCarthy pinning his faith on youth to an extent. Certainly a very youthful strike force. 18 years of age, Robbie Keane and 22, Keith O'Neill. That's the Croatian team. We reckon they'll play 3-5-2. Of course, there's no Shuker, no Vlavic, but uh, three played every single minute in France 98. Ladic, the goalkeeper, Asanovic, the midfielder, and Yarni, the left wing back. And as well as that, Stanic started every match, and Stimac played in six and was a sub in the seventh. They are missing some players of, of great ability, particularly the strikers, Boxic and Suker, as you say, George. But the one thing that stood him in great stead in France was a wonderful spirit that runs throughout the team. They really work hard for one another, and it's certainly not going to be an easy task. Today's referee, Vitor Manuel Melo Pereira, a 41-year-old engineer from Lisbon, who did two of the matches in the World Cup, including one of them involving Croatia. they beat Jamaica by three goals to one. How will it be today? First whistle sounds, the game is on. Ireland play left to right. Under blue skies with a few puffs of white overhead. The rain of the morning is given way to a pleasant afternoon. Atmosphere. Boban is uh, still down. It's Robbie Keane. And it's now with Jason McAteer. Cross from Irwin. Let it clear by Yarni. Irwin's still going on there. And eventually it's a penalty. Keith O'Neill went down. Yurch is challenged. And the referee gives the penalty. What a start. I look forward to seeing it again, but it looked innocuous enough for me. Dennis Irwin, though, was complaining to the referee straight away. I think it's harsh. I mean, Jorcic couldn't quite get out of the way. Yarny was also trying to flick at it. And I think Jorcic, I'm not surprised that he's very surprised it's been given. But we'll take it. Just three minutes gone. Dennis Irwin felled by Jurcic and a penalty to Ireland which Irwin himself will take now he's very adept from the spot and it'll be Irwin against Ladic never taken one for Ireland before it's Irwin against Ladic. It's 1 0. And a dream start to Euro 2000 for Ireland. Dennis Irwin converts the penalty, having been brought down himself. And Ireland hit the front. Exactly what we were looking for. Stimats was actually trying to put Dennis Irwin off, but with his experience. He remained composed, just picked the spot, keep her own way, no chance. Fantastic start. He was looking for Keith O'Neill, Stevat steps up. Well, Keith O'Neill was injured uh, around the same time as Irwin was winning the penalty, and he seems still to be suffering from that knock, and he had such a long period of inactivity because of problems with his ankle. But, of course, on the bench, there is the uh, considerable presence of Tony Cascarino. Another free kick, meanwhile, to Croatia, won by Stanic. This time the challenge 
from Kinsella. Pretty conclusive too, he was slightly late and caught his man. Keith O'Neill still in need of assistance. The referee invites it on. That's the last thing you want to see with Keith O'Neill after all his injury troubles over the last couple of seasons to uh, suffer an injury blow so early in the game. Let's hope once the magic, magic sponge lands on his ankle, he'll be up and running again. Cascarino is already available to make his entrance if required. Keith O'Neill will, as is the regulation, be taken off on the stretcher. But I'm sure Mick McCarthy won't want to make a change at this early stage. Only eight minutes on the clock. O'Neill goes off. And the message seems to be that uh, it's not good. Kieran Murray, the physiotherapist, makes his way to the dugout to make the information that indeed Tony Cascarino is going to go on. Keith O'Neill must feel jinx, but he's had a goal-scoring start to the season as Cascarino. And with McAteer is an excellent crosser on the right and an out-and-out -out winger in Damien Duff. Maybe not so bad to have a big man up front. After all, sad circumstances, it may be. Tony Cascarino makes his entrance. Most experienced man on the pitch. 77th international. But here's a free kick to start the game off again for Croatia. Set up for Yarni to thump at the wall, did its job. Yarni again, and given sort and gathered it in. Wall did well, stuck together because Yarni really got a lot behind that ball. It was certainly travelling, but second time round, easy for given. Free kick. Judo, none too impressed with the decision. Duff winning the free kick. Well, it was a bad slip in the first place by Soldo. He put his teammate in trouble by giving it away. This will be Soldo to take the kick. Throw back in the box. Saunton curls it, headed clear by Stimats. And for Keane, who's onside, Roy Keane. Robbie Keane at the six-yard box. Headed clear, though, by Soldo. Roy Keane with another opportunity. Robbie Keane trying to turn. What a hand ball. Referee says no. But you know, I thought that was more of a penalty than the first one, because Stimats had definitely played the ball with his arm. It caught it, but the referee wasn't prepared to give. Probably feels he's been too generous already. Roy Keane with the ball in. And as it comes up here, watch Stimats. Maybe it was shoulder. He, see, he moved his arm probably after it hit him. Better than the dive. Igor Stimats, the Derby County defender. Staunton for Bab. Robach came in. Now it's Kinsella. Relishing this occasion. Roy Keane. McAteer as Erwin goes round the outside. McAteer hoisting it towards Cascarino. And with the tall figure of Soldo taking no chances, putting it behind. Corner to Ireland. Cunningham's up, Roy Keane, Robbie Keane. Cascarino, Bab, taken by Staunton, it's come free to McAteer, deflection, danger, 2-0. Roy Keane makes it two in 15 minutes. The shot was McAteer's, the deflection was wicked, and Roy Keane was there to finish it off. That's a couple of times now McAteer has been very clever with his positioning. If the corner comes in, it's only half cleared. He strikes the shot in, could go anywhere. Fortunately, hit on the head of Roy Keane. All he knew he had to do was just direct it away from Ladic, the goalkeeper, and into the far corner. He was perfectly positioned for the deflection, straight on his head. Thank you. 2-0. Couldn't be better.
Well, let's say he's feeling pretty happy. The team hasn't scored two at Lansdowne Road since they beat Liechtenstein in May of 1997. Stimats. And Yarni. Back for Asanovic. Yarni. Stanic. Challenged by Kitzler. Van Yarni. It looks like a bit of a dive. Dennis Irwin tackled. Yarni fell fluttered to the ground and uh, free kicks been awarded. Made the most of it, but better from Kinsley getting back. That time he timed it really well. Won the ball, but Yarni con the ref. That uh, gives Croatia the free kick. Steam match forward again. Boban curls it. It's Roy Keane's head gets it away. Back again by Tudor. Offside. Back hasn't gone up. Stanic is too high with the feet. It's a free kick to Ireland. Well, he should have been penalised before that because he was five yards behind the Irish defence when the ball was headed back in. The linesman on the far side was having a little kip there. Ball watching. Boban whips it in. Roy Keane back there. Help them. Now look at Stanich. He's practically on top of Shea Given, the goalkeeper. Ball comes back in. Still not in the picture. Now, and still no flag. Support in Lansdowne Road for the visiting team. Let's hope they're enjoying Dublin as much as most of the visitors seem to. Sure yeah. they are, George, but they're a bit more muted than they were in France at the moment. Uh, the one thing they won't be enjoying about here is the football. Brilliant play. It's now Irwin. His cross. Hits this header. Too high. Great ball that, wasn't it? It was great work from him. I mean, he, that's the one thing about him for one so young. He has great awareness at the time of what's around him. And, and, of course, he has the capability to deliver as well. In the end, when the ball did come into the box, it was a difficult header for Kinsel to execute. Meanwhile, free kick to Croatia, yet another. And play forward for Stanic, he's pass given, but he couldn't control it, goal kick. Well, the boost for Stanic, alleging a dive. I think credit to Shea given as well, George, because I think he knew he wasn't going to get there, and I think he thought that Stanic might take a chance on dive, so cleverly he kept well out of the way, so the referee couldn't give anything. But it was a wonderfully quick take and free kick that almost got him in. The touch is there, he's not going to get it. Given doesn't get near him, uh, it wasn't that bad a dive. He's just flopped on his backside, so we let him off with that one. They got nothing for it anyway. Staunton. It's Robbie Keane. Schimitz and St Stimatz winning it back. And now Stanich beaten by Bab. Was kicked by Staunton. And Duff went down as Soldo came in on the back. And the yellow card. Tudor gets the yellow card. He must have known it was coming. It's just a blatant tackle from behind. Had no hope whatsoever of getting the ball. The free kick taken by Staunton. Free kick to Croatia, and he gets a yellow card as well. Seemed a bit harsh, that. Never mind the yellow card, the free kick seemed harsh. Free kick to Croatia. Robert Yarny will take. Towards Jurcic. Boban pulled back by Kinsler. The free kick. Jurcic. Soldo. Stanish went in. 
but the pass wasn't accurate enough to create a threat on Shea Gibbons' goal. Still, though, unacceptable because the two centre-backs, they're having a little chat about it now, but they let Stanich get away from the two of them. Completely lovely ball in from Soldo. Just needs Stanich to throw himself at it and commit himself a bit more, but worrying. This woman is describing a haunting in her house. Who's she gonna call? Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh. do you wanna? Sorry. It's okay, she seems peaceful. Hello. Yeah, that stuff went everywhere, by the way, in every crack. I'm here about the receptionist job. You're hired. <laughs> If it was a race thing or a lady thing, but I'm mad as hell. Ghostbusters, an Irish TV premiere, Wednesday at 9.35 on RTE1. Sign up to air today and get totally unlimited broadband for just $29.99 a month for six months. And get Amazon Prime Video on us for a whole year. Plus the Air Sport Pack for free, where you'll enjoy all Pro 14 rugby and every Champions League game live. That's Amazon Prime Video on us for a whole year, totally unlimited broadband and the Air Sport Pack free for just $29.99 a month for six months. Call 1-800-500-300, go in store or visit air.ie. Oh. Air, let's make possible. The National Lottery. Today, we're better connected than ever before. It's a wonderful time to be curious. Follow your curiosity with unlimited bill pay. No data caps on Ireland's best performing mobile network. I'm sure I saw it here a second ago. Oh, one try on that? Yeah, we had it. Did you try the drawer? Look. It's never easy getting round to it. But if you're reviewing your finances, a good place to start is by reviewing your mortgage. Have you tried all the boxes? Yeah. Wherever you bank, Talk to the Ulster Bank Mortgage Team about switching to Ireland's lowest four or seven year fixed rate and see if you could save. There it is. Search Ulster Bank Switch. Ulster Bank. Help for what matters. It's been a night to remember in Rome for Charlton and for Ireland, for all of us associated with this Irish team. They did us proud. It's the best thing ever happened to Ireland, Jackie Child. Italia 90 was without parallel in Irish history. It, it was the best thing that ever happened. for Yarny. Skipping past Irwin, three in the middle for him, Yarny's cross. The one he picked out was wearing green, Kenny Cunningham. That's a measure of the threat posed by Robert Yarny on the wing. Hasanovic. Irwin taking command, putting it out of play. Corner to Croatia. Dennis Irwin was actually holding Hasanovic. He could have been penalised for that, you know. Well, up they've got the corner. Hasanovic taking it. Jurcic went up. It's Damien Duck who clears. Keane against Schmitz. Keane found his feet again quickly. Lovely little sleight of foot to make the space. And now it's Roy Keane. Back to Irwin. Robbie Keane again. Balls out. It's a pity that, but it was very tight when Dennis Irwin played him back in because his technique first time round was lovely. Yarny, McAteer closing on him. Yarny looking for Maric, but from Roy Keane it's rebounded to Boban. 
Boban, no way past Irwin. The throw then to Croatia. Yanni. Taking on McAteer. And he got this tackle in, but the throw has been awarded to Croatia. Asanovic. Drilled in there. Boban trying to get turned. Roy Keane taking off his toe. McAteer makes ground. Keane rolls it for him. Tackle there by Jurcic. Just looking at Duff already, George. At times he looks tired, a bit like Chris Waddle. Uh, he looks as if he's knackered already, but that's just his style. I think the one thing he can improve on up to now is his crossing. He's had chances to deliver, and he's not got good ball in. That needs to pick up. Bab. And now Staunton. Tripped over the top for Robbie Keane. Lovely control, Keane impeded, was he? he? Tries the shot, and Ladic has to scramble to save at the second attempt. Well, well. Some wonderful touches for Robbie Keane. What oh, brilliant control. And the turn all in one movement to get away from Stimats. And again, the defender's hands were up. There was contact, not enough in the referee's eyes. Boban, Sanovic, Boban, it's Magateer, but now it's with Simic, little ball over the top looking for Boban, but Boban and Sanovic both play those balls superbly, little dinks over the top, that time Boban was just stretching, I think we're probably a little fortunate to look as if we're going to go in at half-time, 2-0 up, George. We, we've had a look on both goals. The penalty, some say yes. I'm sure some, some will say no. And the deflection for the second goal, but Croatia looked by far the better passing side. And, and you know, we could learn a, two, a thing or two from Ladic forward. Now it's Dennis Irwin. Nice to the ball for McAteer. Sasanovic. Roll for Boban. Yanni. Soldo. Jurcic. That's for Tudor. Norton. Simic though, back for Tudor, Asanovic, Babs clearance, and Yarni, lovely skill to bring it down, Yarni hoisted across, and it was Tudor who got up, but Given was able to save, the young man now got to Juventus, well it wasn't a great clearance from Phil Babs, when it did come back in from Yarny. I think it was Steve Stolden actually slightly underneath Boban, the captain. But again, he did just enough to prevent any power. And that's the last action of the first half. A half that's evidently satisfactory from Ireland's point of view. Dennis Irwin converted the penalty after he was fouled in just the fourth minute. And then Roy Keane taking advantage of the deflection to head to the net to make it 2-0. This was the first. Dennis Irwin, his first penalty for Ireland, 1-0. And then, from Staunton's corner, not properly cleared, McAteer with a half volley, deflected up in the air, and Roy Keane's header planting it into the corner of the net. That's how it is at half-time at Lansdowne Road. Second half kicks off at Lansdowne Road with a change on each side, and Ireland has sent on Jeff Kenna in place of Damien Duff. Kenna goes to right back, Irwin is at left back, and Steve Staunton is in midfield. And on the Croatian side, well, we did say that Silvio Maric was making no kind of an impact. He's been replaced by Igor Pavic, who was a late call-up to the squad. Pavic of Hansa Rostock in the German league wins his fifth cap.
Hasanovic. Back to Vladic. Push there. Many a free kick to Ireland by Stanich. But uh, just look at the two of the foreground there. Phil Bow on the left, Kenny Cunningham on the right. They've clearly put on fresh shirts for the second half, and they're both wearing number four. That is quite incredible. And uh, well, I won't say I've never seen it before, because something at the back of my mind says I have, but I don't think I've seen it at this kind of level. And certainly the referee and his officials ought to get it sorted out, because what happens if either or both get booked? This is Panic. Boban. And now Tudor. Time, time, time. Given. Happy to see that one sail over the bar from Jurcic. Sometimes it happens, George, you're right. I mean, it doesn't have to be raining with saturated conditions for you to change shirts at halftime. Sometimes perspiration is enough to do it. And obviously, um, Cunningham has hastily picked up a shirt. Bob started with four, Cunningham with five, so Cunningham is the man who's uh, done wrong. I know Tony Cascarino's come off the bench in the past, hasn't he? With his tracksuit on, realised he's not got a shirt underneath and has had to run back into the dressing room, but I haven't seen that for a while. Well, of course, it would all be sorted if they did what they do at the World Cup and put names on the backs of shirts. Maybe it is a case for squad numbers after all, but it could lead to confusion. If one gets booked, followed by the other, he could find himself sent off in error. Keane goes in, no penalty. Boban went down, two captains together. Now it's Phil Bab. Cascarino. One by Stimats. Asanovic. Support there from Tudor, but instead leaving it for Jurcic. Soldo, Jurcic again, and Asanovic. Beautiful ball by Boban for Yarni. Yarni's cross headed to Kenna. First corner of the second half is to Croatia. Well, if the referee gave a penalty in the first half, I think he could easily have given one there. I thought that was a touch reckless, surprisingly reckless from Roy Keane on Boba, and that could easily have been given as well. It's a corner to Croatia. Robert Yarni will take it. A lot of air on it towards the back to Tudor, put it back into the danger zone. In went Soldo. And the final effort from Stimats is too high. Worrying moments, but when it did fall to Stimats, the centre-back in the end, he couldn't quite adjust and get himself into position to actually execute the volley well. But it bobbled around a lot. We weren't convincing him, trying to get it away. And when it did come to him, well, it was awkward. Back it goes to Kenna. Jim Kenna making ground and seeking out. Mark Kinsler, but he was tracked back by Soldo. Ball goes out for a throw to Ireland. And another throw. Taken by Kenna, seeking the galloping McAteer. And Schliemann was last to touch it. It's a corner to Ireland. Well, he read it well, did Schliemann, but needless corner to give away. I think he could have done better than that. Keane joins the attack. Cascarino, obviously the main target when it is swept across by Staunton. Ladic is there. He's dropped it. He's saved it. It's a danger averted for Croatia. Run by Stamic. And now it's Staunton. Bab. showed for him, he's gone for the short one to McAteer. Past Boban for Kenna again. Keane. Kenna back to Cunningham. Good ball out for McAteer. Stimats has come out of the middle. McAteer with the cross. Too close to Sol. He's found Stimats. Not sure he meant that. I thought he was trying to play Cascarino in for a minute. But it's better football from Ireland. We drew them out, the ball over the top, and we almost got in. Back. 
Kenny Cunningham. This is Kenna. And again, Cascarino had just stepped that fraction forward offside. Tudor, Asanovic. Boban. Pamic. Through Soldo to Yarni. Soldo. Kenna makes the tackle. Throw into Croatia. Back with Boban. Sanovic. That's Asanovic again. Back with Jurcic, and that's for Tudor. Jurcic, Tudor, Boban, Jurcic, but uh, Stanic, just the final touch went wrong. Oh. And then Soldo steps up and Robbie Keane's in behind him. Got man back, nice turn by Keane, Cascarino's available, so too is McAteer. McAteer with a shot, just wide. Well, Keane really shouldn't have been looking to pass it because had his first touch been better and he played the ball ahead of him, then I'm sure he would have at least have had a much easier shot and goal. In the end, it got stuck under his feet a bit, but dreadful mistake at the back in the first place, leaving it to one another. And he got himself in a little bit of a muddle, and eventually McAteer, quite wide, gone for the far post and pulled it. It was Solder who stepped up and let him right in. He can't play offside in your opposition half. Which appeared to be what he had done. Jurcic was just on his right hand side, George, and I think in the end he decided I'll just leave it to him. It is Destination Art all this year, so if you fancy a little bit of inspo, why not join myself and Ellie on our staycation adventure? We're heading off in our trusty camper van to check out the sites and see what sort of mischief we can get up to, really. We'll also have celebrity guests travelling around the country reporting back on their own Irish getaways. Jay, come on, get a move on. Connemara, here we come. Woo! I'm going to show you what you've been missing out on. No place like home. Tonight at 6.30 on RTE 1 and RTE Player. I think the monster is back, Grandad. Oh dear, the one-eyed fella. No, the ginormous green slimy one. Where is he? I think he's under my bed. No, not the under here. We must have frightened them all. The way we're connecting is changing. That's why at 3, we've removed usage limits from all you can eat data. For all customers, forever. 3. Make it count. Getting the most from your broadband isn't a matter of luck. Switch to Virgin Media and grab super fast broadband. Just €35 Euro a month for six months and €59 Euro a month after that. And you'll also pick up an incredible sports anywhere pass. Free. The sale that keeps on giving. Now on. See virginmedia.ie. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in J U S T E A T. Somebody say just be. I like this orange, and I like this one, but I don't like that orange. Oh, shut up, Mike. Aldi, like brands, only cheaper. The National Lottery. Oh, a bit colder today. Oh, come on. I shouldn't have eaten so late. <sighs> Love a dog. When we get our own place, and we'll need a garden, I hope we've saved enough. There may be a lot running through your mind right now. 
But when it comes to buying your home, we believe in permanent support. That's why, as well as guiding you through your application, our dedicated team will be working hard to give you mortgage credit approval in 72 hours. And when you do find the one, we'll be there every step of the way. That's permanent support. Yes. Start your journey home with us today. For decades, the Dublin team has featured star talent from one small club, but it's a club and a community that's had its ups and downs. People would have called us knackers, scumbags. Some people would have said, no point in working with fellas and body one because they won't stay playing. They were good kids and they deserve to have a chance. I'm proud to say I'm from Ballymun Kickums and I pray for Ballymun Kickums. Passing it on, Ballymun Kickums, Thursday at 10 past 10 on RTE 1 and RTE Player. occasion Stimatz makes the tackle and eventually Robbie Keane brings him down. Frustration that from again a good position. Stimatz did well. Boban leading the break. Stanich. Poor Ross and the booze for the incident in the first half when he appeared to dive though television showed it wasn't so much a dive. Anyway Two door. Pamic got there. Goal kick. Again, importantly, as the header is being made by Panic, we had a defender trying to tackle, and in that instance, it was Jeff Kenner. Enough to put him off. Looks a fearsome character, Panic, but hasn't had much chance to show it as yet. in his way. Ireland going to make the change now. Lee Carsley for Robbie Keane. The referee hasn't seen the officials board yet. Being held aloft and Robbie being called aside and now he's got the message. And the substitution is made and the crowd rise to Robbie Keane making his exit. Lee Carsley about to go in for the action, making his seventh appearance for Ireland. Started the last four internationals, Lee Carsley, but obviously the duplication in roles when Roy Keane was in the side, and they're playing 4-4-2, but now Robbie Keane is gone, and a second substitution about to be made by Croatia. The man in question is Tata Kubrini. Taking out two doors. For Croatia, number 11, Peter Kaplan, replacing number 16, Igor Shooter. He actually came on in the World Cup. Made one appearance as a substitute against Japan. And meanwhile, free kick to Ireland. Dennis Irwin, too close to Ladic, happy to punch. Here's Carsley. Well saved by Ladic. How's that for a first intervention? Carsley got the knee over the ball. Half volley superbly. And forced a save from Ladic. Well, the keeper did well to make up for the fact that he punched the ball. He could easily have caught the initial centre. But Lee Carsley did so well to keep the ball down. It's the most difficult to execute a ball because it's bounced just in front of him. But to keep it down as he did, what a wonderful save in the end. Here's the corner. Cascarino beaten to it. It's come out to Kinsler. Kinsler's shot. Still in, Bab 
with a cross. This time Ladic catches. Well, if anyone deserves a goal, it's Mark Kinsler. He really has worked hard this afternoon, involved in almost everything that happened in the first half. And similar thing again, only half cleared, didn't get it away, and he squeezed the shot through a sea of bodies. Ladic unsighted, deserved a goal. Well, I'd say President Tudjman would be very happy that Ladic didn't admire his handiwork in the first instance. Here's danger though, Pamic State. That's Shea Given. Forward for Kinsler, cut out by Soldo. Yanni. Maric. Karsley in on Boban. And then on Asanovic. They've known each other from Derby. This is Roy Keane. Staunton was caught there. And then Stanic puts it out. Staunton is still down, clutching his knee. And uh, already Croatia down a man. Another substitution required. Steve Staunton down because Stanic was laid on him and it was probably a direct result of the bad miss from Panic. Igor Stimats. Stanic. Stimats past Kinsella. Boban. That's for Yarni. Pass back a tear. Across comes Kenna. Yarni then goes down and wins his free kick. There was contact, but equally on Yarni's side, exaggeration. McAteer did well, actually, to get back and help out Kenneth. There's a little touch here, but made the most of it. Now, here's the free kick coming. Pamic is in there jostling. Curled by Boban. Pamic got there, goal kick. Just can't adjust in time. It's coming, coming on the near post. Can't quite get out of the way. Ideally, I think he probably would have been looking to just flick it on, help it on its way. Too strong a touch. This has been a very satisfactory afternoon for Miroslav Blažević. Still 2-0 down, as they have been since 15 minutes into the game. And now there are just over 20 to go. Well, for the first 20 minutes of the second half, they were still very, very patient, although two goals behind. Just the last five minutes or so, they've been looking a little less assured. Kenna's free kick. Off the head from Soldo, it's come to Staunton. Behind it from Stanic. Stanic makes the challenge, down he goes, the card's coming out, he's already been booked, so he has to go up. Stanic is sent off for a second yellow card for a second foul on Steve Staunton. I actually feel a touch sorry for him because it's it's a nothing foul really. The ball broke kindly for Steve Staunton. He's reacted faster, just poked it down the touchline. And Stanic is just beaten by the footwork. I mean, again, he's not trying to play the player. It is harsh, that's a referee applying the letter of the law. Second yellow card and the sending off for Mario Stanic. Free kick's been taken, it's come to Keane. And now Kenna. I wonder what else can go our way today. A, a third goal would be nice. A long, lonely walk for Mario Stanic, who plays with Parma in Italy and was a key figure starting every game in the World Cup. And now they have to do without him. Staunton caught here, and the other man going to be sent off. And in the space of a minute, Bronislav Jurcic joins Stanic the dressing room for another dreadful foul on Steve Staunton. 
Well, I was hoping for a third goal, George, but nine men will do. I mean, I felt the first one was maybe harsh, but the second one is downright stupid because Jorcic has just dived in. The ball is long gone. It's uh, pretty severe from behind. He's caught Steve Staunton on his right heel. And I'm not surprised to see that red flashed. Well, Croatia now down to nine men. 18 minutes to go. And you'd have to start feeling a little confident. Certainly confidence abounds among the 34,000 in Lansdowne Road. Where did that last happen? Two men sent off the opposition team. Staunton, cut out by Stimatz. Of more significance to Croatia is the fact that they will be without those two players as the Group 8 competition unfolds. Possibly for the two matches that follow. Cross looking for Pavic. Erwin defended it well. Do you know, again, Erwin played the man. I think he feared that Panic was going to get in, and Panic is protesting to the referee. But if we see that again, Dennis Erwin certainly leaned into his man, and he wants a penalty. Just a yellow card for complaining, though. But Dennis did take a chance, because he certainly didn't attempt to play the ball, but instead leaned into Panic. He's just coming into the box now, and I watch Dennis goes towards the man. Everything is going our way. Well, the crowd has certainly enjoyed this afternoon, helped by the fact that Ireland went 2-0 up after 15 minutes only. And now they're clearly feeling that it's the beginning of something. Vic McCarthy got the team he wanted, and they've delivered two goals early on. Croatia weren't able to find a way through. And now there's just 15 more minutes. Staunton. Keane, it goes back to Kinsella. Who will really be saved again by Ladic. Well positioned and read it well. It's great. There's a lovely layoff from Roy Keane there, exactly where Kinsella was. But wonderful positioning by Ladic. Didn't have to die for it. Was able to just stand up to it and take it first time, which is something he's not done always today good strike firm stop Asanovic Boban Schivitz back for Asanovic looking for Pamic now it's bad Pamic given saved well that would have been criminal had they let one in there that's Kamikaze defending. You don't try and take the ball down like that in your own box, particularly on your less favoured foot. And he was so fortunate to get away with that was Phil Babb. Well, that would have been uh, crazy. And that's the second time in this match that Phil Babb has been caught just like that. Kinsler, Roy Keane, saved by Ladic. Just tried to pick a spot, curl it inside the post, but Ladic read what he was trying to do but again Phil Bob when the ball drops here the first thing in his mind should be just to hump it downfield ask no questions you don't do things like that thankfully again Panic straight at given Boban Yarni Schmitz Try to slide one through to Pamic. Try to get turned. Keane blocked it. And then it's Kinsler bringing it away. Cascarino's forward. Staunton joins the attack as well. But not a good ball by Kinsler. Easily read by Tokic. It's a tired pass, George. He's run his heart out. Kirpan. Pamic in the middle. Kirpan's cross. Pretty useless. There'll be three minutes of time added on at the end of the 45, which arrives just now. I think two goals in the first half. We could have added two more in the second, but for the crossbar and Ladic, we would have. On the whole, George, highly satisfactory. One or two little picking points. At the first half, we could have kept possession better at times. We handed the initiative to Croatia to try and get back into the game. And in the second half as well, one or two defensive lapses. It's got to be cut out. Kenna. We've got to get 
to 93 minutes before the game will be over. Bab. Cunningham. And Keane. Bab. And Cunningham. And now Carsley. Important, of course, to get this campaign off to a good start because there are only three games this autumn. This is followed by the trip to Belgrade and then Malta at home. And then we don't have another match until Macedonia in March of next year. And obviously, if things went wrong at the outset, it be a long, long time to wait pondering it. But it's certainly shaping up here. The three points to be collected from game number one. Pavic. And the ball taken away by Asadovic. Pavic couldn't get there. And it's out of the possession once more. Now easily it's looking like Mick McCarthy's best win since he took charge. And I think you'll see a sizable grin on his face after this one. Good ball by Staunton to Cascarino. And a nice touch by Cascarino. And now it's McAteer. Carsley and Keane. Dennis Irwin. And Staunton wasn't showing for it. Roy Keane was. I suppose, in another sense, too, Mick McCarthy deserves the credit for picking the team he picked and playing the way they played. And they went at it the right way to begin with, as you've said. And 2 0 up after 15 minutes was exactly the start they would have wanted. And this is the team that finished third in the world. Hangover or no hangover, they're still very, very good. But they weren't good enough to cause problems in Dublin. And Mick McCarthy gets the congratulations of Mick Byrne at the end of a match that saw his team comfortably through by two goals to nil. For all the f***ing you had in the first half, Ireland got the two goals to Dennis Irwin and Roy Keane here. And from half-time on, there was no real threat from Croatia. There could have been further goals from Ireland. But the two that came in the opening quarter hour proved sufficient. A marvellous game by Mark Kinsler. This was the first goal. Dennis Irwin brought down the combination of Jarni and Jurcic. And from the penalty kick, he collected his third international goal. Superbly dispatched. And then right on the half, the quarter hour, the corner from Steve Staunton was not properly cleared. McAteer's shot deflected off Soldo, and Roy Keane rose to plant it past Ladic into the corner. Those two goals earn the three points in Group 8. A most satisfactory afternoon's work for Mick McCarthy, and the qualifying campaign has begun precisely as he would have wished. Two goals to nil, the final score. Both goals coming in the opening quarter hour. And now the vista of Euro, Euro 2000 opens up before Mick McCarthy's team. Well, Mick, I suppose you couldn't have asked for a better start to this uh, European qualifi qualification campaign. What did you uh, think of their performance overall? I thought they were excellent, the lads, to be quite honest with you. And, and they, were, they were a couple of silly bookings, but they were... We were disciplined because there was one or two nasty challenges went in. We didn't react to them. But to be fair, I think the, you know, the Croatians got a bit frustrated. I thought it was a good performance. Uh, I was more worried when it went to nine men because, strangely enough, they've got nothing to lose. They'll put balls in the box. and you know They had more chances at nine men than they did when, when they had 11. A lot of people commented before the game that this was a young team, so you must be particularly pleased the way they held their composure when Croatia certainly seems to be losing theirs. Yeah, I, I, I was particularly pleased, and, and I changed it around. I took the two young lads off that everybody recognises as potentially big stars for us. But in fairness, we, we're not that experienced in international football, and certainly not experienced in those sort of situations where the team's down to nine men, and we need to have to kill it. But to be fair, I put my three subs on. I, I would have actually changed it and put another forward on when they went to nine men, so we could have threatened them a bit more. But uh, we are young and inexperienced as such. We get in there. I think it's improving. I said that was what I wanted. That's the team I wanted. That was the start we all wanted. The Republic of Ireland up and running on the road to Euro 2000. 
Unfortunately, that run was to end in yet another playoff defeat, this time to Turkey. Join us again soon for more RTE Sport Classics. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh. do you want to? Sorry. It's okay. She seems peaceful. Hello.